Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Manitoba Agriculture and Resource Development Horticulture School webinar series. If you have any questions during this presentation today, please type them into the questions section of the GoToWebinar menu, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded, and you will receive a link to the recording. Thank you. Thanks very much, Lori. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Tom Gonzalez. I'm Manitoba Agriculture's Vegetable Crop Specialist, and I'd like to welcome you to the second webinar in the series this year where we're running uh, horticulture school webinars. Uh, it's a bit of a change. Over the past number of years, we've had uh, we've presented extension information uh, mostly in person and used our annual horticultural horticulture school as the main uh, event but uh, as we all know COVID-19 uh, has uh, placed some restrictions on how we're able to uh, do extension this year and Manitoba Agriculture and our partners uh, both at uh, AFC and ACC are uh, looking at different ways to provide uh, information to producers and industry and we opted to uh, try out this webinar format. And uh, today's is the second of six uh, webinars. And our speaker today is Sajad Rao. He's an educator and researcher at Assiniboine Community College. Sajad will be speaking today on the topic of sweet potato production. Yeah, thanks, uh, Tom, and thank Lori uh, for organizing this webinar. And I would like to thanks for uh, joining this uh, webinar. So, as Tom mentioned, that I worked here at Assiniboine Community College. Uh, I teach in horticulture production program and also with the sustainable food system program. So that's my 50% responsibility. The other 50% responsibility my goes towards the research, applied research. Uh, so. Going both or like three things, uh, I will just focus a little bit on my uh, what I focus on my research and apply research. So there's a three main focus which I will be sharing on you and you can see on my screen as well. So new production technologies, uh, which can be utilized in the rural and the remote communities. And uh, one of the two projects I have been done uh, under this my research focus uh, about the food production systems that are economical and viable and uh, commercially feasible. And the third thing is the training and the capacity building. And that seminar or this information on the sweet potato production, what we are go just going to uh, going today is the part of this, uh, my third uh, research focus. Today, uh, we are going to discuss uh, some information on the sweet potato production. So it's a very long waiting topic. And I normally ask like uh, in the community and the growers and the market gardeners, semi uh, commercial producer, they always ask or some like friends and families even ask, oh, can we grow a sweet potato uh, here in Manitoba? And I always say, yeah, you, we can grow not only sweet potatoes, we can grow anything in Manitoba. So the reason I say anything in Manitoba is because the science has been uh, so much advanced now. So we need to tweak a little bit on the environment. And uh, other than the environment, we need to a little bit adjust the genetics. So once we play with these two things, so we can grow anything in Manitoba. So the other example uh, is, is a little bit of funny that I can say that uh, I uh, born and raised in an environment which is plus 40 degrees Celsius and now from last 15, 20 years, I'm living in here in minus 40 uh, degrees Celsius. So, so that's how I adjusted myself in this environment with the different genetics. So changing the genetics, sometimes it's not uh, easy, but sometimes changing the environment might be easy. So just, uh, Going into that contest, so sweet potato production is yes, it is. Uh, we can do in Manitoba environmental conditions. So, but it's needs some uh, adjustments, some information, some uh, good genetics uh, we can use in here. Not all the varieties we can grow. Definitely, it is a tropical plant. So, it needs some information, some technology. And today, what that's what we are going to discuss. So, what we can do and how we can grow. Uh, what are the requirements? Uh, what we need to do with the sweet potatoes to grow here in. 
So just a briefly, uh, uh, some common questions I just want to address in my uh, this webinar today. Some people say this is a sweet potatoes. It's uh, like the same family as of a Irish potato or the white potatoes. So no, it's not the same families belong to a convolvulaceae family or the morning glory family, whereas the uh, Irish potato is from the Solanaceae family. So it's a different family. And in terms of the roots, so the uh, the potatoes, what we eat is the tubers. They are not the roots, uh, whereas the sweet potato is an actual root and it's a root vegetable. It has a range of colors. It comes in a beige, uh, white, red, pink, orange, purple. That's the flesh color I'm talking about. The skin, of, skin colors are entirely from beige to even like a dark uh, pink or red as well. So it's a very good uh, vegetable, very rich in vitamin A, vitamin C, it's in calcium and in the fiber. Uh, it's not much cultivated in Canada at this point, but there's a lot of uh, need, I will say, it's a lot of requirement here. Uh, there's a lot of uh, potential to grow uh, in Canada, in particular overall country from east to west, but approximately 700 hectares of uh, sweet potato is being uh, cultivated and mainly in the eastern provinces. Uh, there are some challenges when we talk about the Canadian environment and in, when we talk about the in particular the Manitoba environment which is a uh, uh, so slightly different than other uh, east and west coast so we are in a sitting in a prairies and we have a little bit harsh climate in terms of cold so this uh, crop need a long and a, a hot uh, growing season so when we say it's a long long means it's need about 120 to 25 uh, frost free days and an ideal uh, days for growing this crop uh, fortunately or unfortunately we don't get these days in manitoba environmental conditions so we got like hardly like 100, 105 fr uh, frost free days. So uh, it is very sensitive. This crop is sensitive to cold air and it's a uh, cold soil. So we have to wait until the soil temperature uh, get a little bit warmer uh, before we start uh, putting slips or the cuttings or the planting material into the ground. So uh, it can be affected by an early spring. So we don't have a uh, big window to start early and harvest early because we have a spring is cold. Uh, still, we can see nowadays what we are going in like, like yesterday in Manitoba and Brandon from where I am sitting right now, it is uh, yesterday was going around 30 degrees Celsius and in the night it comes to like a one digit. It's like nine degree at night. So it's a big fluctuation in the temperature in our environmental conditions in Manitoba. So it's a little bit of a sensitive crop to cold, frost, chilling injuries. So uh, we need to be careful of the planting and harvesting in particular, both things. Uh, in coming slides, I'll show you what type of material we have and how we can grow and what the best uh, options we have to grow uh, this crop in Manitoba. Uh, another good option uh, for this is like we can use some uh, mulch. It's a black plastic mulch. It's a biodegradable mulch is available nowadays. Uh, that's a good option we can use. Uh, and uh, there's a different materials uh, used uh, as compared to the other crops. In other crops, there's in a seed, uh, some uh, tissue culture materials, some cutting, some slips. There's a different uh, propagating materials in different different crops. Mostly sweet potato is being grown by the slips or cutting. So before we go into a difference between the slips or cutting, I would like and request Laurie to uh, to give uh, the questions, the polling question to the audience, and then we can see what the answers at the end of this presentation. So, Laurie, it's over to you. All right. <clears throat> so, I'm just going to launch this poll. One minute, please. Um, hmm. Okay, I'm having a challenge uh, launching the poll, Sajad, so maybe uh, carry on with your presentation. I'm not sure why that's happening today. Okay, that's fine. So if you were able to do that, just let me know in between. We can do that. Okay. So uh, we're just talking about this planting material because it's little birds, uh, sometimes uh, sell some people or the growers or there's some market gardeners or some they ask me what are the slips and what are the different cuttings so cuttings is normally we can use in the vegetative propagation in anything whatever we want so some plants they are very good in cuttings and some goods uh, they are in 
uh, without cutting. There's uh, some roots cutting, the, like for example, the Irish potato, the white potato, we just cut the tuber into two, uh, three pieces, and then we can just seed it. And from those uh, tuber cuttings, uh, we can propagate a new plant. So in uh, sweet potatoes, so, uh, as you see on uh, the slide now, so there's a portion of a sweet potato and you can see there's a plant coming out of the sweet potato one end that is called a slip. So it's a, like in a propagation directly from the roots. So it's a vegetative propagation. So it's a slips are shoot containing some roots. So basically when we detach or uh, from these roots, they come up with a small uh, root. So I have some pictures in the next slide. So I will show you that as well. So where are the cuttings? We just cut the wines uh, or remove from the cutting uh, the wines uh, from the plants one to two inch above the soil line and it should be around like uh, 10 to 12 inches or approximately minimum 10 inches long so then we call it is a, a cutting uh i'll just see it so that's what it is if you see on the screen this is what the cutting i made it and uh, the good thing for the cutting is that if you made some cuttings today and uh, by chance the weather is not good or ideal and the weather forecast changes right away and you have to keep this uh, cutting because it's very perishable and it's just like it starts rotting or dying towards dying after three to four days. It looks like they are dying, but they are not dying. Each nodes, uh, they can sprout into a new plants, as you can see in this picture as well here. So between the leaf and between the stem, you can see small here is a node. So it's each node, uh, they can just go and sprout into a new plant. So the one thing, a good thing we can do is with that, if we want to save this cutting for the next two to three days or five days or even for a seven days. So what we can do, we can just put in a, a jar or a container and just dip in a water so they can just shoot. Uh, the good thing with this cutting, I have seen many other crops uh, as compared to many other crops. After cuttings, you just cut a stem or a cut a wine and dip in a water or just in a soak uh, towel or anything within 24 hours you can see a small white dot on a node so it means they are just shooting their roots so they are very good in rooting so once they starts getting rooting within 24 hours so they can survive and they can be a fresh uh, for as long as we just take care for them so that what it is the cutting and if we cut we cannot right away plant into the field we can just save them uh, for a three, four days and they remain fresh and good and healthy. So by putting in a water like a jar as shown in uh, here, uh, or we can just put in a soak towel or make sure we are just putting the root area, not the leaf area. Otherwise the leaf area or the vegetative part on the top of those cuttings, they will start get rotten. So make sure we are just doing with the roots only. Uh, where are that's the slips? So when we grow the roots, actual uh, roots, so we will follow the procedure in the next slide. So I'm just showing here to just to make sure what the slips, what is the difference between the slips and the cutting. So that's what it's called the slips. So that's it's a direct uh, coming from the roots, what we uh, basically seed in a pro mix or in a soil or in the grounds uh, to produce some slips. So when at, at this stage, so we can just detach uh, from the actual root and we can grow them directly into the uh ground outside uh into our grounds or into the soil or into the growing media wherever we are uh growing our sweet potatoes so they come with uh, some roots sometime there if we early plug it out they come with a very small number of the roots sometimes they are big roots as you can see here so that's the main difference between the slips and cutting now the question is that which one is good in terms of production or in terms of making wines and then making a roots uh, underground so they both are good. As far as they are healthy, they are virus free, they are disease free. They both are good in producing. There's a not a very significant difference in production. So it's up to you or up to the grower or up to their resources. So what resources are available and how we can produce the slips or how we can produce the cuttings. So if you are producing the cuttings, so from a uh, big wine, so we can produce more than one or two from a single uh, stem. We can produce like five cuttings from a single stem or at the early stage, if we just uh, plug it out from a single slip, so we can just only make a one slips from them. So that's what uh, the slips and the cutting. Normally, these uh, roots were not used in production systems. So I just wanted to make it clear. So it's an expensive way, it's a lengthy way, and our environment does not uh, 
helpful or significantly adopt to this uh, kind of a propagation. So the best is to make a cuttings or the slips. So uh, there's a different methods uh, we have done uh, at our greenhouse uh, in a tunnel. So to produce uh, those uh, slips, either we want to make it a slips or we want to a cutting from those uh, long slips. So it's a different environment is being used. So let's talk about how many slips we needed or how many cuttings we needed for an acre. It's approximately 1300 uh, slips or, uh, or a cuttings we need for an acre. So 65, which you can see is for an and a half an acre. So when we need to start producing those slips, so that's the question. So when we need to start those uh, slips. So our environment or uh, the research, what I did here at, at Brandon, uh, our uh, ACC research plot. So from last three, four years, uh, is the first two weeks, depending upon the forecast, depending upon the temperature, depending upon the year, uh, first two weeks of June is good to plant sweet potatoes. So if you're like the year, uh, this year, I planted on the 1st of June. Last year, I planted on the 5th of June. So I'm just talking about my experiments, what I do here. So it's the same for the commercial or semi-commercial or market gardener. So we can plant outside after like 1st of June. So if we are going to make a little bit late after 15th of June, so make sure we are getting late. So after 15th of June, the planting will be late because uh, the slips has to establish into the field. They have to make their roots. And then after a fluctuating temperature, they have to start winding uh, uh, into the field. There's a one more important thing I want to mention in here. Once we plant the slips or the planting material or the cuttings in the field, they don't look good for the first weeks or two weeks. So it doesn't mean they are dead. So may just wait and see, they will come up because they are coming from a different environment into an outside growing environment and they have to establish their roots if these roots are not well established. So they will establish uh, with the uh, ground temperature as far as the vegetative material above the ground, they have to establish with their air temperature. So it will take a time, it will take one to two weeks, they look loose, they looks like dying, they looks like wilting, but they're still good. If the nodes, if you closely watch those one, if the nodes are good, they are not, uh, seems to be dead, so they are going good. So after 10 to uh, 14 days, you will see a new sprouts and the new leaves, normally they're like, like a purplish color. So they are start coming out. So once they start coming out after like six weeks, you will see a good uh, wines in your field. So that's the uh, method what uh, I have been tested in the greenhouse so with the black crate and on our benches. So if we just lay down some pro mix or a swell or a growing media and just lay down some of those sweet potatoes. So I use uh, the big one and the medium uh, roots uh, from the last year and uh, we stored at our uh, uh, storage area so that I'm going to come at the end. So how we store, how we cure. So anyway, at this point, we are just talking about how to produce the slips. So that's what I have used like six to seven to eight in a one of the black crates and then uh, use a small uh, uh, clothing line and then just after six inches of Promex, just lay down the slips and then put a, like three to four inches of a layer of a Promex. Uh, and then uh, we'll just or if you want to do on a bigger scale on a benches or on a wooden benches or in a high raise uh, benches, so that can be done as well. So it depends upon how big uh, scale uh, we are working on it. So as a market gardener, we are going for a, like in a half an acre or an acre, or if you are a semi uh, commercial producer, so we are going for a one to five acre, or if you are going from five to 10 acres or more than acre. So depending upon uh, how many slips we need it. Uh, normally, average uh, slips or the cuttings, uh, what we can get out of it as a per square meter, this depends upon the production system, uh, is 400 to 600 cuttings. We can get it in a meter square. That's a normal research. Uh, we can get out uh, like the, uh, sorry, the cuttings, we can make out of those uh, different procedures. Once we have uh, put the promix uh, on top of three to four inches, so we have to wait. It's not going to sprout in a one day or a two days. Different varieties take a different week. So 
if we have done covered so good keep it moist don't make it too wet otherwise the roots will start rotting in it if they are not properly cured if they were not properly stored and we are using those type of the roots and we are using all the resources like you can see the pro mix and everything and uh, good temperature and humidity and everything and we are watering too much so we are not doing the good job so we have to just moist the soil and we have to keep check it is just a moist we don't want to heavily water until they sprouts so once they get sprouts you can see this is the two roots which i have just dug out to see if they're sprouting or not so and then after three to four weeks you will see a small sproutings so when we see these sprouting so it means it's successfully growing so they will come it's normally it takes uh three to four weeks to come out and uh, we have to wait because if it's a different varieties. So like, for example, it's a Covington or Boyegard or uh, Radiance or Orleans, they have a different times of sprouting. So this comes with the experience or we go with the research. For example, if you decided to go with the Radiance or Orleans or Covington, so we have a data how many days it will take. So like three to four weeks is good enough for all three varieties. But if it's a different variety, might be it will take five weeks or some varieties, or if we have, uh put in a pro mix too deep like more than six inches then might it takes time as well so it's the best way to just pull it out and see if they start sprouting which is good like i have seen in this uh, picture so just sprout okay they are coming and that's good so it will come out if there is a three to four inch layer of pro mix so they are good to go so they will come out easily so uh once they're sprouted uh, I will recommend just we can do some like general fertilizer, general purpose fertilizer for a, a normal application. And then after normal application, just it starts uh, giving them after 14 days or a bi weekly small uh, NPK, it's a liquid fertilizer or any uh, fertilizer which you use for based on your uh, production is a big production then we can use a different fertilizer if you have a small gardening uh, production so you can use uh, any uh, kind of a, uh, a 9 18 10 or a 9 10 10 fertilizer or a liquid fertilizer so we can use any type of the fertilizer uh, depending upon what we need sometimes we can do the side dressing with some like a three pounds of a 5 10 10 fertilizer per uh, 100 uh, feet of a row if we are going in a big production or in a uh, semi-commercial production of a slips so this is how we go with the slips production so because this is the most important part and the most expensive part uh, if you go online and see the different uh, nurseries or the propagators so the most expensive part in the sweet potato production is the slips from all other resources so we have to be very careful so while we are producing so our material should be good it's healthy uh, following the guidelines and uh, properly moisting the soil properly fertilizing after sprouting not before sprouting if we again go before sprouting heavy fertilizer so might be the roots under the uh, promix or the uh, on the soil that might be rotten so once we have a good slips ready or close to ready definitely as i mentioned that okay we have to plant uh, close to the first week or the second week uh, at the most uh, outside in the grounds so what we have to do so uh, make sure the best is a well drained soil sandy loam soils uh, the soil ranges between 5.8 to 6 is the good uh, soil ph level uh, for our climate, as I mentioned earlier, this can be 105 days. Uh, I will say approximately we have uh, to grow. I will talk about the varieties which we can grow a little bit later. So let's talk about how we can uh, prepare. So more the good soil we have, eight to 10 inches of a good layer of a soil on the top soil. It's a well aerated, uh, well moistened uh, soil so normally they are grown on a ridges or on a beds so again it depends upon uh the resources if we are going on a hills which is uh, like in a ridge so we can grow on that as well so the basic philosophy on that one is approximately 10 inches deep and approximately 12 to 16 inches wide that where the sweet potatoes grows 
normally from a one plant or from a one slips or from a one cutting so that's the radius so it's almost that's the deep and that's how wide the space they needed to grow approximately seven to ten sweet potatoes under one plant so it's eight to ten inches tall ridges they are good if you are going for a row spacing so we are going for like a 36 or three feet uh, that's work as well so that's the table shows how many slips we need uh, based on uh, the row spacing there are experiments we conducted and we did and the others in the other part of the world uh, in the other part of our uh, canadian environment is being used is like a single row or a double row on a single bed for example, if you are going 1.2 meter or a 40 uh, inches uh, row spacing, so we can go a double row or a double spacing or two rows going on the same bed. But we have to maintain a space and we have to make a plant to plant distance. So that's a small table you can see in the, uh, on the PowerPoint here is telling about how many or showing that how many slips we needed or how many plants we needed. Uh, for the per acre if you go for 40 inches and a 12 inches uh, between the plant to plant or in row spacing then approximately 13,000 plants we needed so uh, there's a two different types of uh, production we can do is uh, there are significant differences it's a mulch and without mulch so there's a uh, there's a lot of uh, advantages of mulch it is expensive yes it's a little bit of expensive now uh, there is it's a biodegradable mulches are available so we don't have to bother of uh, pulling all the mulch from the field but if you're on a small uh, scale production so we can easily handle again it depends on how what type of the irrigation method we are using so we used here at our research center uh, it's a drip irrigation system so we use that one so that's a one go uh, machine which can go for a mulch and we can uh, that go for a drip irrigation as well and make a, a bed as well so it's in, in one operation so we can use that as well so we can use that or without mulch as well so until the wines are well developed or well established or they are start winding up so there will be a problem of weeds without mulch uh, so the beauty of the mulch is that it controls the weeds it will also helpful in making the temperature underground as well so which is good for the sweet potatoes so we can use both uh, generally uh, the mulch if we are using a biodegradable mulch so it will warm up the soil uh, reduce as i mentioned that uh, weed pressure is uh, too much extended and we are not using too much of a water it retains the water as well so uh, one machine can work in a one go as well or if we are using in a manual uh, or different operation, so we can go with that as well. So with a two uh, in a single um, row, if it is a 40 inches or more than 40 inches, so we can use a double row uh, production system or a single row production system. So in a single row production system, we need to increase the plants on a double row. We just have to uh, reduce the number of plants uh, within a single row, but it will increase the yield ultimately. But the basic thing, which I just uh, mentioned that, make sure we have a eight to 10 inches deep and at least 12 to 16 inches wide area for a one slip to at least cover that production, sweet, uh, the roots production. So they can swell up, they can reach to their optimum size. They should be of a grade one or either grade two. We don't want jumbos. We don't want the small skinny uh, sweet potatoes. So that's the uh, machine. What we use is it. I've just put some information. It's not might be some accurate at this point uh, uh, related to the price. That's the price when we it's like three, four years back might be it is low or high. I'm not sure what it is, but that's the machine which uh, uh, work for everything. It's just go like a bed adjustable to the bed sizes, 36 inches to 48, six inches. And it's covered with the mulch, with the drip irrigation, everything in a one go. It's adjustable height it's making a height and there's another models and there's other series as well so it's depending upon the resources and depending upon the uh, number of acres or your uh, production how big production you wanted to go in so based on that so we can have a choice to go for that one or even for like some manual operations we can use to doing some mulch so once it is winey you can see how big uh, they can make a wine so they can cover up the area if it is not mulch and if it is a mulch 
still it's covering the area and uh, once in between the rows we need to make sure we have to cover uh, the we, uh, we have to make some weedings arrangements so we have to eradicate those weeds so using a different option hand hoeing or so we can go for a roundup if you have an early uh, you can see some weeds coming in early without the before the wines are developed so carefully we can go for the roundup or any other herbicide as well uh, once we come to the commercial fertilizer so the commercial fertilizer uh, what we need is is uh, 50 to 80 pounds of a nitrogen per acre. Uh, that's very standard. So I will suggest to go uh, your analysis uh, of your soil or your plot where you are growing the sweet potato that is recommended and see what the profile of your soil is because it depends upon the crop rotation as well. If there is an legumium, uh, leguminaceae crop or some uh, pulses crop or something like that is growing before so might be you have a good nitrogen uh, before from your previous crop or you have a different rotation so make sure according to your rotation or your uh, regular uh, profile just go with the uh, nutrients profile of your soil and based on that just go for that recommendation so this is very general specific type of very uh, sorry it's a very general type of recommendation so go for a 50 pounds of a pre-plant and then 20 to 30 like after uh, pounds after four weeks when the transplanting is done we can go as a side dressing or uh, better for a side dressing if we are using as a uh, drip irrigation so we can add on a drip irrigation as a liquid uh, fertigation as well so with the medium i will just talk about the medium soil so if we have a medium type of a phosphorus available already uh, p205 so we can uh, use up to 140 uh, sorry 120 up to 120 per acre and that's all during the field preparation similarly we can do a potassium is also during the field uh, field preparation about 100 uh, to 250 depending upon your uh, soil profile so based uh, on the experience what i have from last three four years i haven't experienced much of disease and insect pressure on this crop in manitoba but having said that there are chances and uh, from the literature and the from other research i have studied there is some problem in the soils as well like the wire worms or the grubs they can be a big problem uh, the best thing is that if your slips or the cuttings or the roots from where you are propagating your planting material if they are healthy so you will not get into a trouble for your diseases pressure at least and if your field is good there's no uh, soil borne diseases or coming back from your crop rotation or any other history you may you might know and you already uh, looking for that so then you are good to go so no big insect i have seen there's a some plea beetle i have seen it in the early days but uh, since these wines have a big leaves and it's make a good vegetative uh, uh, plant on top so it doesn't make any significant difference in production so so far in this province uh, in manitoba we are good uh, i do i haven't seen any like a big pressure but as i mentioned still there are chances some like scurf some soil borne diseases uh, some wireworm some grubs they can be a problem uh, if it is already in the soil or in the environment already there so we need to keep a watch on it those things uh, harvesting so I mentioned I repeat again so we are planting in June first two weeks like June 1st to June 14 I will say maximum we can go the ideal is between June 5 to June 10 that's the maximum ideal depending upon whether if it is rainy not rainy your ridges are ready or they are not ready the plants are ready the soil already is depending upon your operations so if we get like 105 days now the good thing and the good part is that we don't have an environment what is actually required for a sweet potato to grow. But there are good varieties, early maturity varieties. They have proven and they are very good in yields. They get their good length, they get their good width, they get their good size, they get uh, good their good uh, bricks, all the sugar contents and everything within 105 days. So there are early varieties so Covington, which is the one of the variety uh and orleans they are all com both are the commercial varieties they perform good and uh, there's a one new variety which is a first canadian variety i will uh, say which is the radiance uh, which is earlier than both of these Covington and orleans and perform well and having a good uh, yields uh, than Covington and uh, orleans 
So uh, when we come to the harvesting, so what the procedure, if, in a, uh, if we are in a small scale or in a large scale, we need to cut the vines. So it's a different ways, uh, either we mow it down uh, or we just cut manually. So let me see, we have pictures here, uh, some of the like cutting vines. So this is like a research plot here. So we cut the vines uh, before we harvest. And if there's a black mulch and if it's a biodegradable, we don't have to worry about that. But if we have to worry if there is a uh, irrigation uh, line going on, drip irrigation. So you can see in this picture. So it's a, one of the uh, uh, fellow is just pulling out the irrigation tape because otherwise it will just twine around or sort of between your harvester. So we need to make sure we are pulling all these things. And again, it's a small scale, it's easily manageable. If it is a larger scale, then we have to uh, mow it down the wines before we cut. And we can wait up to three to four days if the weathers are good. Once we have uh, cut the wines and we have raked down the wines from the fields and uh, or we have already mowed down. So when you mow down, leave two to three inches above the tuber, so we are not skinning off, we are not exposing the roots. So make sure your uh, mower is adjustable and first do a little uh, run, it's a trial and just see how high you are and then just adjust, make an adjustment and then uh, go with that one. So one to two days, if the wines are good, there's no frost, uh, if the frost happen and the wines are dead and uh, after frost, you just cut the wines, or mow it down the wines and then you cut, uh, prepare for harvesting. Make sure don't make it delay for a week or two weeks. Then the roots starts get rotting. Otherwise, they are safe for three to four days. Uh, harvester, uh, we use a manual harvester. So that's a, a one shank harvester what we used uh, if you are in a small scale. So we can use this one on the side. So if you have planted on a row on a left side or a right side or in between the ridge. So just make sure if you're in the between the ridge, the best practice and what I have experienced is that put the shaft on the side. So just pull the soil from the sides and all the roots will be exposed nicely. So they will just come at on the very nice. But if it is a little bit on the just on the edge of the roots, so might be uh, it will injure the roots. Otherwise, all the roots will come like a fresh roots. So we can do this harvesting. The uh, once we have harvested, make sure we are okay. Sorry, I just mo I'm moving very fast. I guess I have to just go back. So what is the best time for the harvesting? And if there is a rains at the end of September and on early October there is a frost or there is a early snow, what we have to do? So these are the three, four questions and all three, four questions I have experienced uh, in my production trials here in Brandon. So uh, the good time to harvest is the end of the September. So these three varieties, what I named like Covington, Orleans and Radiance, if you are growing in 5th to 10th of June, harvesting the end of September based on your operations, the timings and the weather conditions, they are mature, we get the full maturity, we get the good size, we can harvest. And if something happens, like the weather, is there too much rains at the end, you are prepared already for harvesting, there's a rain or might be snow, Don't have you don't have to worry. So at least three to four days, there's nothing wrong and nothing growing, uh, going wrong underground. So roots will be saved. If you haven't pulled out the mulch or you haven't pulled out the roots, or you haven't pulled out the uh, overall plot. So then it's fine. So there's no need to worry. So it's, it should be good. For example, if you see in this picture where these two uh, students, they're working in here, if they're in this condition and you prepared and there is a frost or a snow or something happen, so nothing is going to happen through the roots. So that's what I have did. I have did an experiment more than a week, but I will not suggest you at this point so that you can you can wait for a week, but till, Mid of October, I have made harvesting and those harvestings were good. So nothing uh, happened to those harvesting. So from end of September to end of, uh, sorry, the middle of October, yes, that's the window where, where we can adjust or we can uh, uh, work out our harvesting. So let's uh, replay that again. So 5th of June, the planting outside in the field from 5th to 10th, ideal end of September, to the first week of October, that's the ideal. So in that period, 
we will get a maximum yield without any damage, uh, without any losses in yield, if all the agronomic practices, everything has been done right. So that's the harvester we use uh, for a single row or a single bed uh, or a single ridge. Uh, and it's a simple sh uh, one sh uh, shaft we can use at a three point hitch. So which is good uh, for a small scale harvesting. So uh, after harvesting, don't leave the roots if it is a cold or if it is a too hot. In both situations, don't leave it outside in the fields and make sure they are uh, inside the buildings. And once we have an inside buildings uh, with a good root, so uh, that's the three varieties, which is uh, suitable uh, for our Radiance, Orleans and Covington, which I've just mentioned it. So it's a uh, 445, what you see on the screen, that's the uh, uh, Radiance. So that's the experimental name. So I have to decode them. So that's the radiance. It's a new variety which is being developed for the uh, Manitoba and uh, for the Canadian environment, in particular for the Ontario and the Eastern provinces, which works good for all across the Canada. Uh, it's a curing. So how we cure that thing? So curing is the most important part after the harvesting, because once we have a good harvest, we don't want to lose that harvest. So the best curing will last long for the storing. If the curing was not done properly, the storing will not be successful. So it's 10 to 14 days uh, as curing is being needed. And whatever the losses of the weight is during the curing. If the curing is done good, perfect, between 27 to 28, this is the range, but don't go cons uh, consistently on 30 degrees Celsius, it's 28, consistent is good and uh, between 90 to 95 degree relative humidity uh, with a good uh, ventilation in a room, uh, the curing is good. So you, will, you won't find like any bruises or cuts and everything has been healed up very quickly and uh, it's worked very well. To my experience, how I did it, I had a greenhouse uh, in my location here and I used my uh, one greenhouse uh, when the weathers are good instead of like 10, 14 days, I have gone for a little bit of extended, like might be 16, 17 days, and I've closed the greenhouse. Uh, it was a passive solar greenhouse, and I was maintaining the temperature, though it was fluctuating a bit in the night temperature, but still it makes a good curing. And I have stored till the March and April for the next year. So I have harvested in October or the end of September, and uh, after curing for two weeks or more than two weeks, I have stored in a walk-in cooler and the roots were good without any losses. Maximum losses might be in weight, might be is a one person, not more than one person for my, from my experience. Uh, but my curing, uh, if I take a good uh, care for the curing. So that's the recommended temperature and the humidity for the curing. And once it is cured, so we can just uh, put in a containers or any type of a crates or anything and maintain the temperature for a 15 to 12 to 15 degrees Celsius with humidity of 75%. So then the storing will be the good. So that's how they looks like after like curing. So you can see I cured it, all the bruises, cuts on these uh, PowerPoint, you can see they're all like very well healed. And after the healing, they looks good. And then it's stored in my walk-in cooler. So that's maintaining like 15 to uh, 12 to 15 degrees Celsius with a, uh, my small humidifier, which is a portable humidifier. So I have to just change uh, or put the water in it and change the filter in it. And it's a very portable. It's maintaining my humidity around 80% uh, humidity with some ventilation. They are good. And I uh, took my sweet potatoes out in uh, March and April for my slips production. So uh, that's what I used uh, for my uh, overall in general from starting from slips production uh, till the curing and again for a next cycle. So uh, in, if I'll just summarize my overall uh, this production, uh, sweet potato production, number one, we can produce in Manitoba. Yes, we can produce. We can produce semi-commercial. We can produce commercially. Yes. Do we have a variety available which can work in Manitoba? Good. Yes. Number one is the radiance. 
acclimatized. We have conducted four years of a trials here. It works perfect in Manitoba environmental condition, given all the good agronomic conditions. Can we produce the slips at a grower's level? Yes, we can produce the slips at a grower level if we can maintain 20 degrees Celsius and average uh, with a right humidity of 50 to 60 for 60 day, uh, for approximately 60 days, 50 to 60 days. Yes, we can produce slips at our grower. Either it's in a high tunnel, it's a low tunnel, it's in a greenhouse, or it's a growing room. So, yes, we can produce our own slips as well. So we can produce our slips. So there is a one uh, handout is already or published uh, the how to produce a slips. So I can share that link at the end or in uh, the Laurie, she can also share that link as well in the PowerPoint. So that will be available too. So there is a guide as well. So other than this uh, presentation or other than my email address, if you have some questions. So there are resources are available, how to produce, when to produce, what we can do in different scenarios. So all these informations are available now. So if you want to go into semi-commercial or a commercial production, yes, we can go. There is a demand uh, and we are approximately importing 55 million kilograms annually in Canada. So there is a demand and uh, there is a need and there is an industry, uh, processing industry also looking for the sweet potatoes. So that's all about the sweet potato production. Within a given time, I can provide you. Uh, if you guys have any questions, so Laurie can take some questions and uh, I will try to answer your questions. Thank you. Okay, everyone, if you have any questions, you can enter them in the questions tab on the go to menu to your right on the menu and um, I can answer or ask them, but I currently don't see any questions uh, so you must have done a really awesome job of explaining all that and I will too share that link Sajad that you had mentioned um, yeah. on on the when I send out the recording to this link uh, so thank you Tom do you have any questions uh, not a not not a question per se but uh, I, I found that uh, very informative there was a lot of information there so uh, as a person who uh, didn't know all that much about sweet potatoes production beforehand, it uh, is going to take me a while to digest it. I think I'm going to go and look at the webinar online again uh, at my leisure sometime. Um, so, Lori, there are no questions? No. Okay. Well, uh, I'd like to thank Sajad for uh, taking the time to uh, provide us with. Uh, with that information and uh, I'd like to thank all of you who took the time to uh, join in for today's webinar. Um, there's four more webinars remaining in the series. The next webinar in the series will be on Thursday, July 23rd at 1.30 and it will be on fruit production and Anthony Mantenko will be uh, presenting that. For those of you uh, who are certified crop advisors, and would like to uh, receive CCA credits for uh, today's uh, webinar, can you please email your CCA number to Tracy Cummer? And her email address is tracey dot c u m m e r at g o v dot m b dot c a. And uh, there it is on your screen. I see it now. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone again and I uh, hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks a lot.